Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest this evening is one of the biggest movie stars in America. This month alone, he stars in Welcome to Marwin, Beautiful Boy, and Vice. Please welcome back to the Late Show, my Soul Cycle emergency contact, Steve Carell. <laughs> You know, it's so strange. We only see each other in tiny little slices these days. Yeah. But there were years where we saw each other every day. All the time. For years on end. Yeah. We, uh, we, had, uh, we were at Second City, of course, together mm -hmm. for years. Years. Uh, we were at the Dana Carvey show for a <laughs> year. <laughs> and then we shared... Uh, how long did we have an office together at the Daily? Like four? Yeah, like four, four years. Four or five years, something like that. Yeah. What, was I an annoying office mate? <laughs> you were great. Was I? You were a fantastic office I tried mate. to be annoying. N you weren't. <laughs> you weren't at all. You don't remember when I replaced all the photos on your desk with photos of me? <laughs> I and do were... rem I remember one thing you did. You dug up a review that I'd never seen before of a TV show that I had done, and it was the most scathing review I'd ever... <laughs> And you suddenly got it to my attention. I, it was such a terrible review. <laughs> it was so harsh. I think you're Himmler. You're described as Himmler right. in it. Yeah. That even Hitler had his Himmler. Right. And, and in this review, uh, uh, who is uh, Tim... Uh, Tim Curry. Tim Curry is Hitler, and you're Himmler. That's how bad you both are in this. Right. And yeah. it was so good and so funny that you wept with laughter. It was so... And I actually accept an award... Um, years ago, and I read from that review at the award ceremony because it was so much fun. It was such a good, terrible review of you that when I started the Colbert Report, this is absolutely true, I tried to hire the guy. <laughs> you told yes, you told me and that. And he said, no, what is the Colbert Report? I'm like, I think it's going to be good. He's like, no, I don't want the job. <laughs> what are the holidays like? Uh, I assume that you're a traditional guy. You are a traditional guy. You yeah. have a traditional holidays. What's it like? You, did, you guys do a big feast? No, no, no. We don't, we don't we don't decorate, we don't have a meal. Oh. We'll just, you know, order some takeout, kids in the other room, sure. you know, that stuff like <laughs> Quiet, daddy's drinking. Shh, here's a videotape. We don't even have a VCR. Watch it. <laughs> you know, it's sure. Yeah. Can we start a fire? No. <laughs> but it's cold. <laughs> Toughen up. Come on. No, um, we do. We wake up and we do. It's it's very traditional. We wake up and we. The kids are older now, so it's not like little kid stuff anymore. How old, how old are they now? They're uh, fourteen and seventeen. Yeah, that's getting there. Yeah, but we still do. You know, the cookies for Santa. We still sure. we go through that that process every year. Do you go through the like? What would you ask Santa for? No. 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 This year, my son actually said, "You're not going to use different kinds of wrapping paper for Santa, are you, Dad?" <laughs> no. No, I'm not going to do that. Because you would He's do like, that for, for camouflage? <laughs> so that Santa's presents are wrapped differently than Mom and Dad's presents? Yeah. Yeah, it really worked. <laughs> no, they figured that out That's instantly. so nice. Whose idea was that? Was that yours or Nancy's? I don't know. We sort of came up with it together, I guess. Okay. Cinnamon rolls is a big component of, of Christmas. Christmas day. morning? Yeah. We yeah. wake up uh, stockings and make cinnamon rolls. And, and then right back to bed. <laughs> That's it. I heard that you, and I did not know about this, because, again, I've known you for 30 years, something like that. Yeah. Um, you, I, how, I don't know how well I know you, though, because I just found out that you were a postman. <laughs> how could I know you for 30 years and I never found out that you were a mailman? It's not something I went around advertising. It's not... <laughs> it was one of the hardest jobs I ever had. You didn't use that as a pickup line? <laughs> Hello, ladies. <laughs> you know what? Back in the day, I was also a Revolutionary War reenactor. And a mailman. So here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Want to lick some stamps? <laughs> <laughs> 
it. So what is the job? What makes the, I know the job looks terrible. Neither rain nor sleet uh, nor you know all the other things. So you hard. Do it. it was a tough job because they, you know, I, I was a rural mail carrier in Littleton, Massachusetts, and they didn't have uh, postal. I think only like the really senior delivery people had the official trucks. So I had to use my Toyota, which had a bench seat, and I would steer with one hand with my foot over here on the gas. You would sit in the passenger seat. And I would sit in the passenger seat and ma and, and <laughs> deliver the mail out the right side. That's got to be illegal. In the snow. Really illegal. <laughs> um, and, you know, mail was a big thing back when I was... Oh, I remember it well. It, a lot of people... <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was kind of de rigueur. Um, a yeah. lot of a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of uh, catalogs. Sears catalog was still a big sure. thing. Sure. Yeah. Sears so, was a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sears. Yeah. Did you ever get? Did you get? Um, did you get the Santa Claus letters? We. D I did. Yeah. I get little kids who address letters to Santa, and there was a special place at the post office that they responded to. Or I, I, I the North Pole, you mean? The no the North Pole. Yeah. The, the, they would come to the post office, and then they'd be sent on to the North Pole, right? <laughs> Um, but I w what I would do as a mail carrier is I would write a little handwritten note and say, your uh, letter to Santa Claus has been picked up by special reindeer, reindeer uh, courier, and I'd, I'd leave it in the mailbox. And uh, I just thought, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's your pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Hey, ladies. Hey. Uh -huh. I got a heart. Mm -hmm. Um, but it would also take me until 9 or 10 at night to deliver the mail because I was doing this stupid thing. Um, and I was really bad at it. I was not a good, I was not a good... Were you let go or did you quit? I quit. Okay. And then I moved to Chicago. And that's oh, where I met you. right before. And then you're right. like, I'm not going to talk about my dark past no. delivering mail. No. Um, so, okay, so you got a 17-year-old, you got a 14-year-old. 17-year-old's uh, going off to school soon, one assumes. Yeah. And you're going to be, you and the 14-year-old... How is he, how is he, uh, like in teenage years? How is he going to like being the only one left alone? Because we have a, we have our, our teenage boy, the only one left alone, and he yeah. feels like we loom. Yeah. He feels like he wants us to leave him alone. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. I think he will definitely miss her, but, uh... It'll be the man of the house now. It'll be the, yeah, well, I'm the man of the house. <laughs> what? Yeah. Just tried to slide that one young, right through there, and, didn't you? But he's young and virile. He's up and coming. You know, what? you're what? The, what? What? You're, you're looking great. Don't get me wrong. You're looking good, <laughs> but you know, you know. You know what? A lot of people go through this empty nest thing, yeah. and I, I think it does your kids a disservice because you can't make them feel guilty for going off and experiencing these, this wonderful time of their life. You can't. You, I don't think you can lay that on them, and I actually think it's an indictment of your marriage because you're just afraid of the person you have to <laughs> spend the next... This really feels like you're attacking me right now. <laughs> you, that was not a general you you just used. Your marriage, Stephen Colbert. Well, no, I understand. Like, you, like yeah, sure, you could be happy with your wife yeah. when the kids go off to sure. school. I'm sure. excited. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to, to spend time with my wife. That's, that's... I'm excited to spend time with your wife, too. I knew it! Nice. <laughs> I knew that was going to come. I knew that was how... My mom said, if, if your kids don't want to leave you, you failed. Yeah, I totally agree. I think yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But I'm still going to be sad. Of course, yeah. I'm but you can't lay it on them? No. I what don't can you, you lay on them? For stealing your youth? I what think can you <laughs> lay on them? I think if you're going to cry... Like, my, I didn't, my dad was a very stoic guy. And, you know, they dropped me off. I couldn't have been more excited to be in college. And my mom called me when they got home, you know, after the, the long drive home, and said that he cried as they were pulling away from the school. Oh. But he didn't let me see that. It was like, have fun, you know, go get them. But then I found out. So my mom made me feel guilty. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll try to... Of course I'm going to be sad. It's a, it's, sure. I'm excited, but it's bittersweet. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the favorite things that you, you ever did on stage at, at Second City was... Uh, do you remember playing Fabio on stage at yeah. Second City? Yeah. Um, there was a... It was back in 1994, 3, something like that. Uh, our friend Scott Allman wrote a song called uh, Come Eat Fabio. Because yeah. Fabio had just put out a perfume and an album called Fabio on Romance. Mm -hmm. And it was him being saying, it was like, 
there is no timetable for our love, you know, while sax music played in the background. <laughs> so you would go on stage as Fabio during right. the song, and I would voice you. I would, you would just move your lips, and I would say, I would do Fabio's voice. Right. And we have, we have a clip of it. <laughs> we have a clip of it right here. I am Fabio. <laughs> and I would like to make you my very special lady tonight. <laughs> I believe that the kiss is the communion of the soul. I believe that our bodies were meant to be shared and explored with abandon. I believe that the capital gains tax should be used to offset the deficit for fiscal 93. And I believe that cream rinse is a gift from God. Ciao, bellissima. A long time ago. <laughs> and I love pie. <laughs> <laughs> it was happy days, and um, I, I found the uh, Fabio album uh, that we ba we based that voice on the other day when I was cleaning out my office. And um, I, Merry Christmas! Thank I want you. you. This is the oh. CD that we actually used. And uh, could you go ahead and open it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry You're Christmas welcome. to you. Yeah. I hope I'm not taking. I found it about nine months ago, by the way. That's. You're not. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> Music. <laughs> I got him to sign it. It's what? Signed by Fabio. Oh, I didn't even see that. Right Are here. you kidding? In gold. That gold signature oh is Fabio. Oh my gosh! And I didn't ask him to do this, but he sent along for you. <laughs> All right. A photograph of himself, and it says. To Steve, a true romantic. A true romantic Fabio. So I want you to have this. Thank you so Merry much. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks. And just in case, just in case <laughs> you want to write him anything back, we got a spare of the photograph. Oh. If you want to send anything back to Fabio. I am definitely going to send him a picture of himself that I have. <laughs> You sign to, to him, and we'll send it back to him. For sure. Yeah, Fabio. I love it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Did you um? <laughs> did you get me anything? <laughs> yes, it's in the car. You, you, you got a bunch of films right now. Let's talk about the films, okay? That's my gift to you. <laughs> it's my film work. <laughs> <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> to, to all of America. To America. Uh, we have to take a break, but uh, please don't leave. We'll be right back with more Steve Carell, everybody. <laughs>